Hello, this is Bill Webb, aka Billy Indiana. Today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough for a brand new game by Philip Walker Harding. And this game is published by Ravensburger. It's called Explorers. Now, I believe that the actual board game is unavailable in the U.S. at this time. And so I'm going to be showing you a digital port that you can find online. And I'll put a link down below in the description to show you where you can find both the rules in English and German and French, I believe. Uh, and then also where you can play this online if you're curious to see it. So let's check out Explorers. Huh. All right, so here is the list of rules. And as I said, it starts off in, I think, German at the top. And if you scroll down to page 11, you can see it's in English here. And this game of Explorers says, finally you found it, a new world untouched and ready to be explored. The terrain consists of levitating rocks that are constantly moving, which have hidden this world from view for centuries. But you are not alone. Other explorers are traveling through the strange world, seeking its treasures. Use the map to plan your route wisely and become the greatest explorer of all time. So you can see, I, I really like this art. I think it's pretty. And I like roll and write, flip and write type of games. Uh, here is the setup. I won't go through all the setup. And this is specifically explaining how to play the board game. But just a quick look at the setup. There's going to be player boards where you're going to be putting in these scoring tiles. And they're two-sided. So there's different variants of the scoring tiles. And then you've got these map tiles. And you put those in in random order as well. And at a multiplayer count, you're going to all put them in in the same orientation. Uh, but in solo, obviously, you would just be scoring your points. Now, I won't go through this how to play and the rules, but you can see some of the art here in this digital version of the rules. You're going to be seeing all of these different items on the maps as you're exploring, and I'll talk to you about what each one does and how they each score as we go. When you end the game, it's a four-round game. You add up all your points, and the person with the most points wins, as is true for many games. <laughs> and then here are the expert rules. If you flip over some of those scoring tiles, there's different ways you can do it. You can also track your achievements, so they've got that built into the rules as well. Now, those different achievements and those different abilities aren't available in the online version, but the online version is basically a variation of this or a version of this solo variant. And then at the end of your solo experience, then you can see how you did. If you scored less than 80, you've got a lot left to explore. Come back soon. You're getting the hang of this. You're quite the seasoned explorer. Alexander von Humboldt would be proud of you. They will name a continent after you. And if you score over 120, there is no doubt you're the greatest explorer of all time. And uh, here I think they've got a link if you use this QR code. I found it through BGG. And on BGG, it seems like from the comments in the forum that it may be quite some time because of shipping issues before it actually does come to the U.S. It said that Ravensburger wasn't planning on sending it to the U.S. anytime soon. Now, when you come to this, you can watch the tutorial if you understand German. I don't. And so uh, I just turn off the tutorial and I read the rules on that document. Like I said, links to both of these sites down below. When you play it, you can have the sound turned off or on either way. It's just small little sounds. And there's uh, a few things I want to explain about this before we start, and then I'll explain most of it as I go. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to find one little city that you're going to start at. And they're labeled. There's City B, and you can see these little circles around the edge. Those are going to show me my options of where I can play. Now there's City D down here, City C up here, or down here, and City A over here. And so in the actual board game, it says you're going to start with the one closest to the center where those four map tiles meet. And so I think that's why the, the uh, port here has chosen B for me. Now to start off, you get to pick three places, but they all have to be on the same territory. And that's the general guide for most of your turns. You're going to have to pick one territory and you can make two or three moves. And each time you make a move, it has to be orthogonally adjacent, no diagonal moving. And then in the scoring over here, each of the four rounds, you can potentially click an apple and a carrot and a fish. And if you get one of those three, you're going to get two points. If you're able to get two of the three, you get five. And if you get all three, you get 10 points. And each round is scores separately. But you can only have one of them per round. So you can't click on two apples in any one given round. Around all these four cities, you can see I'm starting around B. If I can get um, on one orthogonal side of a city, I get three points. And these are scored at the end of the game. If I get on two sides, it's five. If I get on three sides, it's seven. If I get on all four sides, it's 10. So I may want to try to reach some of these other cities and explore and surround them to earn those points. Anytime I click on a gem, it's going to give me a point and they are cumulative. So in the first round, if I score two gems, I would get two points. In the second round, if I score three more, second round, my score would be five points. 
And then there are also these keys that you can see around on the map. If you click a key, it doesn't give you any points, but it allows you to get into one of these real, uh, little relic tower locations and you score the relic. And in the first round, all of them are worth 12. And in the next, it's 10 and then eight and then six. So you wanna try to score them as early as possible. And then if you are able to click on one of these maps, the maps allow you to tra traverse different kinds of, of uh, terrain. So I'll show that as we go. Now, to start, I get to pick, I could go on to water, I could go on to this desert type of terrain, I could go onto this grassland, or I could go on to the stony rocky terrain. But all three of my opening moves are gonna have to stay on a single terrain. And you wanna try to plan out your moves so that you can jump to another terrain from the terrain you're on in future turns. So I may wanna go here so that I would be able to jump on that horse. If I click on a horse, it's just gonna give me a free move on any terrain, and every move does have to be adjacent to a previous place I've explored. So you can't jump all over the map, there's no teleportation. Uh, but this gives me a chance to get onto that horse later. And now I have to stay on the green. So I'm gonna go one, two, now that will get me an option to get this gem if I can go onto the water later and get this apple if I stay on the green grassland. It's also getting me closer to this 12. Now I want to scout out where the where the keys are because I need a key to get into that uh, little relic tower or whatever. I forget the exact terminology. This key is pretty close. I may want to come down this direction and this key is pretty close. So I want to try to navigate towards those keys so that I can uh, obtain the points for this tower, this uh, site of exploration. And so once you've done your opening move, you click on these tiles and these tiles are the map exploration tiles and they're gonna tell you where you can explore. And when these are up, the, when these are all overturned and are turned over and played, the round is over. So I click on this and in the board game, the person who's the first player for that turn is going to choose one and the other players would be able to put two exploration X's uh, or two exploration marks on the map if they choose the same terrain, but three if they choose the other. So what this green check mark is showing me is that the computer has chosen stone. So if I choose water, I'm gonna get three. If I choose stone, I'm gonna get two. And so let's see, let's see if I can be strategic about this. This one's good because that'll help me start to surround B a little bit more. Um, I may want to come down this direction so I can get to this key and maybe start heading towards that, um, that horse there. So I'll click that one. Um, and so that I'm heading that direction, all right? And then, oh, I should have done water instead of stone. Lost my focus there. All right, now here, if I pick green, I get to do two. If I pick yellow, I'm gonna to get to do three. And so I might wanna start moving this way to head towards the gym. I might wanna start heading this way and get that key. So I'm gonna do a little of both. And there's my three moves, kind of stretching out. This one, I'll get three moves on yellow again, and I'll get uh, two moves if I go on blue. So let's see, let's go one, two, three, and get that gem. And you can see I'm getting a point there. And then I've got a key, so if I can get green here, I'm gonna be able to get this apple and also get to this tower. So, uh, okay, blue, when you see a dual colored, you can go on, on the road or on the water. So let's see, if I go on the water here, I can get a fish, that's a good one. Um, if I go, let's see, if I go on the horse here, that's gonna give me a free move. So I'm gonna go here and get that apple. And then if I go on this horse, it's gonna give me another free move. So I can go here. And so that gave me quite a few extra moves there on different terrains. All right, I'm extending my exploration. All right, now I'm back. I've got two on the green and I've got three on the stone. So let's see. And it, the one thing nice about the digital port is you can see what your options are. Um, there's no reason for me to do this gray, uh, this stone. I don't really need to go this direction, although I could maybe use this one to start working towards that next gym. So maybe I'll go that way and hope I can still get green. I wanna make sure I use that key here. Um, so, but let's go this way and see if I can hopefully get green on one of these last two tiles. Ooh, yellow. So I may have cornered myself there, which isn't good. Uh, let's see, so yellow here, nothing really to explore that direction. I might wanna start moving up this way towards that gym. So let's do that. I'm also kind of moving towards the carrot there, which would be good. That'd give me 10 points if I can get that carrot. Now, ideally, if I could get a yellow and a green here, one of those dual colored ones like this one, that would be perfect. But let's see what I get. Just green, all right. So I wanna go here first, make sure I get those 12 points and that uses that key. So now I can see I'll need to get another key before I go to one of those other um, locations that have the relics. Um, and let's see, do I, which way do I wanna start pushing? I might go one here so that later I can get that gem and maybe go 
there's no way to get a carrot, so I'll just start heading down towards that apple. And that is round one. So at the end of round one, I've scored five points for getting a, a, an apple and a fish. I've got five points so far for my opening city, and I've got two points for the two gems, and I do have 12 banked for exploring this little tower, relic tower. And we go on to round two. All right, green for three moves, uh, stone for two. So I'll definitely go green for three, so that gets me an apple this round. Uh, which direction should I head here? I can get to that blue from gray, so I don't really need that one. Uh, I'm going to go this way so I can get up to the top of the direction. Maybe, oh, let's go here, see so if will be closer to the key. All right, now I've got blue and gray. That's a nice combo here because I can go blue and then gray and gray. And now I've got another key so I can explore another one of these locations. Now, these are pretty far away, but I might be able to get to this 10-pointer. So we'll strive for that. All right, now I've got green. So if I go here and here and here, I'm going to have access to that uh, gem when I get stone later, when I get on that rocky terrain. And if I get this map, that's going to allow me to choose a different terrain than what the tile here shows me. I'll show you that soon. So now I've got gray and green. So definitely go gray here and gray here, get a couple more gemstones and I can also go green let's see green doesn't help me too much there gray doesn't help me too much there I could start working towards this gemstone or I could start working over here towards this carrot uh, I'll go ahead and start working over here towards this carrot all right now blue so let's see blue doesn't really help me much here I could go here and here to get a fish so now I've got two of the three again need a carrot still having trouble getting those carrots I've still got another move on water. Which direction do I want to go? Let's get this gem. All right. And now I've got water again. I really want to get yellow, um, but I have this banked. So I could, even if this doesn't give me yellow in the last one, I could still use it here. So let's see. How can I capitalize on expanding here? So I can go here and here. Oh, no, I can't get the fish. But maybe next round it'll be set up. I can go here, and now it's set up for this next round. Um, let's see if I go here, it's going to be set up for that gem next round. Hopefully I can get a bunch of gems next round. I also maybe want to start trying to get to A, C, and D here to get those surrounded. I also want to get these two surrounded on B so I can get some more points, but those don't really score till the end. So I'm not in a huge urgency for that. I definitely want to get to this 10 though, this round, because it goes to eight next round. Oh, yellow. Perfect. So I can go here and here and get that 10 points. And then I can go here and get that carrot, which gives me 10 points there. So that was a perfect color for me. All right, now we go on to round three. All right, so green is my choice here. So I can get onto that terrain with that green move. Don't really need to go green down here. Let's see. Um, I could start exploring down this way to try to get beside this one. Let's do that. All right, more green. So that'll give me beside D now. So you can see on D now I've got a few points scored. Now let's see. Let's see if we can get another map over here and maybe also work my way towards surrounding A here. So just kind of setting up points for the future. Okay, that's good. I'll get, uh, get that more surrounded, uh, get myself more surrounded here, get this one. So I got adding points here to surrounding those villages. All right, and now gray. Let's see, am I going to be able to get another key. So this key is not too far away. This key is pretty close. Uh, these exploration locations are pretty far, though. I might be able to get to this one. So let's see if we can start working towards one of those keys here. Uh, if it's not going to work out, let's see. Uh, the gray is not going to help me get to the key too much there. Or, or the blue would help me there, but I'm only going to get two moves if I go blue. Let's, let's stick with gray. We'll go here, um, and then uh, let's go here and here. That gives me an extra move. All right, and so let's go here. So I'm ready to get onto that green for the key. All right, yellow. I could do two green and it might be worth it now. Let's see what I've got in terms of my yellow options. Um, I could work on getting this closer to this map. Let's see. I think I'll go with the yellow. I'll go with the green and start trying to get to that. So there's my key. I've got that. All right. And now I want to get some blue so I can get to this down here. Give me some water. Ah, yellow. But I could do two blue. 
Or let's do this. I'm going to choose this one, which just lets me pick any terrain. So I'm going to pick this one, and I'm going to make my terrain blue, water. And I get to do four instead of three. So one, two, three, four. So I got my eight points there. Now it's my last turn for this round. And I can do yellow and green combination. That's pretty good. I'll do a yellow here for a gemstone. Let's see. What else can I get? Um, that one's a surround. I can't get this one anymore surrounded yet. I'm not close enough to that one. I've got uh, none of the fruit and veggies here, but I don't see any that I'm able to get this round. Uh, what, what, what can I start working towards? Well, let's go this direction. That'll hopefully get me closer to that fish and that horse for next round. All right. Um, so there's yellow. I'm probably missing something that you're seeing. Why doesn't he do that? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I can't get a carrot there. That's good. All right. And now we're in round four, the final round. And so if I can get this key and I can get down to this uh, tower, I'll score another point. So I've got 12, 10, and 8. And if I can work my way over here, it's pretty far. So it might be a challenge to get that. It may be better to try to surround D and surround A. So we'll see what colors come up. Definitely want to get some more gemstones as well. And it's always helpful to get these. All right, so my best choice here is green. So what can I do here with the green? Um, let's see, I can go here to start surrounding that a little bit more. Uh, down here, I could start working towards this map. And it also get me closer to that gym and that carrot. All right, now I've got blue and gray. Okay, so let's do some combo here. Let's go gray here and get that. And let's see, do I have anything right on blue? Any fish that I can get right away? Not right away. Let's get, oh yeah, we did. There we go. Got a fish. Okay. And now we've got gray and blue. Let's see here. That one takes me nowhere. This is going to get me closer to that gym. So I want to get that gym. And I've got one more gray or blue move. Uh, let's start getting towards, let's get this map. There we go. All right, blue. All right, let's go. Uh, Oh, that was a bad move. I started to go towards that fish. I don't really need to because I already got a fish this round. So that was kind of a wasted move. I reacted too quickly. All right, let's see. What can I... I need to get... See if I can get... Well, that key is probably going to help. I don't think I can get that far over. Uh, let's see. Let's go here and here to get more surrounding on that side. All right, you got yellow now. Let's see. I do want to get that carrot still. So let's go there to get the carrot. Um, and... Let's see. I need a gray to get over here. I need a blue to get over here. Uh, I'm going to let's go here and that'll hopefully give me an opportunity to get uh, the blue. Oh, let's go here. Then I can get the blue and the gray potentially. All right. Gray and green. So let's go gray here. Um, and let's see. Go gray and gray. Get another few points there. And now my last one. Let's see, what can I maximize here? So I've got green. So I don't want to really take this map. It's not worth any points, but I might want to use this one. Let's see, what can I maximize here? If I could get a uh, an apple, which that's going to be on green. That's not going to be easy. I'm not going to be able to access that. Um, if I went on, well, I can't get to that horse either because I need to go through two colored trains. I should have set that up better. Um, let's see, if I go blue, I can surround this one, and I can surround this one more, um, and I can surround this one more. So I'll do blue. So I'll go here, that's going to give me some more points. Here, that's going to give me some more points. Um, and, oh, I meant to click that. That was a bad choice. <laughs> I meant to do that so I get four moves, but I did, just took the blue there. So moving a little too quick, and so it didn't score tremendously well. Uh, but you can see here now, if I add up my points, I got five in the first round for my fish and veggies, 10 in the second round, two in the third, and five in the fourth. So that's my score there for fruits or fish and veggies. And then for my um, cities, I was able to surround two of them completely and a little bit of the others. So I get 30 points there. For my gems, it added up to 25 points. And I was able to get 30 points out of exploring those towers. Now let's go back and tell you what I think about explorers. So that is explorers. And my score of 107 put me in the Alexander von Humboldt would be proud of you. So a pretty high score, actually, even though I did do some less than maximized moves there with playing a little too quick. Uh, but a lot of fun. I tend to like Philip Walker Harding games. 
And so this was really exciting for me to get a chance to try it, especially since I know I'm not going to have a chance to get the board game in my hands anytime soon, or at least it doesn't seem so. I do look forward to eventually playing the board game. I think it's probably one I'll want to own again because I, I love Baron Park and Sushi Go and Silver and Gold and many of his other games. And so I think that this is one that would probably strike a good chord with my family. It's got an ease of play. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, but you need to pay attention to what other people are doing in a multiplayer game, but there's not a lot of take that, so to speak. And so I think it would, it would fit right nicely into what our family likes. So definitely a game that I hope to invest in in the future when it becomes available in the US. And for the time being, I'll continue to enjoy this solo port. The main downside being just that you can only play it solo. Other than that, it's very well implemented, very easy to learn, very easy to play, very quick to play, and a challenging little puzzle to see if you can maximize your score. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if it was helpful for you or entertaining for you, I would love it if you'd click on that thumbs up down below to show me that you liked it. And it would be terrific if you'd also subscribe to the channel and follow along. And if you have questions about the gameplay, if there's anything I didn't explain clearly, or if you had suggestions for me on how I can play better next time, leave those comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana, signing off. Huh.